What is up guys, in today's video we're going to be talking about the OG Fortnite remake, so Reboot Royale and Atlas OG Fortnite. Recently, Jackus posted a video kind of going into a deep dive of like what happened to these maps and why they ended up dying, or at least the hype for them certainly died, so we're going to be reacting to that. But before we get into that, I'm just going to kind of give my thoughts on the topic. If you guys do enjoy this video, find it interesting, informative, remember to give it a like, subscribe if you like to see more, and comment down below what you think of this. So. When Creative 2.0 first dropped, there was an insane amount of hype for these OG Fortnite remakes. And the maps came out and they seemed rushed and they were pretty underwhelming for most players so the maps kind of died. And a lot of people looked at that and kind of thought, see, old Fortnite is terrible and the new Fortnite is so much better. I knew these old maps when it last. And I feel like there's definitely improvements the game has made uh, since OG Fortnite, but I don't think these maps not remaining you know top of the charts and being more popular than like retail fortnite really makes any sense i feel like a lot of people kind of wanted to go back to it just for the novelty of it and the excitement of being able to play on that map again and that's why there was so much hype for it i don't think many players expected to you know be grinding that map 24 7 for just for on like for now on and not play normal fortnite anymore it's just something fun to look back on kind of like if you rewatch one of your favorite movies or tv shows it's not that you're saying that show is better than any everything else and you don't ever want to watch anything else ever again but having the option to go back through your old favorite shows is certainly nice and you've also seen this recently in the cod community because there's been an update or some improvements made for the servers of some of the older COD games and a lot of players have been going back into like Black Ops 1, Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops 2 and having a lot of fun playing those old COD games again. When the new COD comes out all of those people are probably going to go back to the new COD and it's not like they're saying that like this 12 year old game is definitively better and more exciting in every way it's just fun to kind of go back and reminisce on the old games especially in a downtime like the cod community is seeing right now because the next game isn't coming out until like the end of the year so now is like kind of a natural lull and that's where i thought like the old fortnite remakes would be ideal is kind of for natural lulls or natural downtimes when fortnite isn't as exciting we recently had the summer event which was underwhelming for a lot of players um, imagine if Atlas or Reboot Royale had to put out Chapter 1 Season 5 during that time with the Season 5 map and the Season 5 loot pool or any other old Fortnite season. It would have been fun to kind of fill the lull or fill the kind of content drought that we were in. With that, kind of go back and reminisce, see how fun it was playing on the old map, kind of reminisce about some of those old weapons. And then when Epic comes back from break or just a day or two later, you just go back to retail Fortnite again. I, I always thought that was where like these old Fortnite creations would really thrive, just during the natural downtimes uh, of when Fortnite has, you know, those natural droughts or natural times where the game isn't as exciting, whether it be an underwhelming event or just be towards the end of the season when we're burnt out on the current one. I always thought that would be, you know, the ideal time for some of these map makers to release these maps. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Now we're going to uh, react to Jackus's video. Uh, they did a really good job kind of explaining what has happened with these maps over time and why they're in the state that they're currently in. Chapter 1 remakes were heralded as the future of Fortnite when UEF- Again, I never thought it was the future. I thought it would be, you know, something exciting to go back to for a period of time, but not going to be something that would replace the main game launched in March, but the reality turned out to be quite different. So, what happened to Atlas, OG Battle Royale, and that Reboot is... Royale? I did some the art for these was so good. research, and I took a deep dive retrospective into both. In March 2023, the Fortnite community was hyped. Chapter 4 Season 2 had just launched for Battle Royale, and Creative was teasing that something big was coming. Unreal. The so Unreal good. editor for Fortnite, or Creative 2.0, is the full Unreal Engine 5 toolset made available for Fortnite creators to build and share their own experiences in. UEFN is truly a game changer for creators, allowing for things once thought impossible to make in Fortnite to be made, and effectively making the creator's imagination and the Fortnite creator's memory the limit. But in the weeks leading up to the launch of UEFN, rumours were beginning to circulate that it would be possible to recreate the entire original Chapter 1 
pretty much ever since Creative 2.0 was leaked or talked about as like essentially going to be mod tools for Fortnite, people were talking about wanting to remake the old map. Uh, so like that's that's why there were so many people that were rushing to do it. It had kind of been a theory a lot of people had or like an idea a lot of people had for years. And I believe Creative 2.0 kind of started to get talked about during like 2020, 2021. So there was a while leading up to this where people were kind of hoping this could be a thing one day. Island in creative mode. In fact, it had already been done. Back in 2021, the boy Dilly released Athena Royale, the most famous- This was like a simplified version because it was made in like normal creative, so it was like far more limited. ...full adaptation to date, made entirely within the legacy creative toolset. Despite the clear limitations of creative, this remake attracted a ton of attention from a lot of channels and streamers who were bored of current Fortnite. But now in 2023, things are different. On March 22nd, less than an hour after- the These trailers were so good too. The launch of UEFN, the team Atlas Creative put out a tweet stating, Welcome to the future of Fortnite. Beyond the irony of the future of Fortnite starting with a remake of a map that was replaced four years ago, people were hyped. A few hours later, they shared the first images of what they called Atlas OG Battle Royale, showing off their remakes of Loot Lake, Shifty Shafts, Anarchy Acres, and everyone's favourite, Tilted Towers. The hype was through the roof. The next day, Atlas OG Battle Royale officially launched in beta. This was huge, except for one small detail. In their announcement tweet, they stated that they had to cut some of the map details due to memory issues yeah and i i don't know anything about making maps but also i feel like they kind of wanted to just rush to put out something even if it wasn't the best version just because like i said there was many people that had this idea and wanted to do this and being the people that get it out first is like a pretty big advantage part of the map wouldn't be there on launch people pretty quickly started to notice that the favourite drop spots were missing. These were mostly minor details like some destroyed houses near the motel or starry suburbs, but the big one was this. No prison. You know, the iconic prison POI? Yeah, entirely absent. I don't really think I ever landed here. I mean, I technically have been there, but it was never really a place I landed at consistently. In fact, today, four months after launch, it's still not there. You can see where it's meant to be, but there's no sign of the prison that so many players loved. Not great. Not only that, but there were bugs. What isn't bugged in Fortnite? Like, obviously, you know, it's a beta. It's a new map that just came out. There's going to be bugs that hopefully get fixed over time. Spoiler, they really didn't. But also, Creative 2.0 was probably very buggy itself. Like, almost everything is in Fortnite. Remember how Chapter 4 Season 1 was at the start? How buggy it was? That's just kind of, that's how Fortnite is. Lots of bugs. When new things get um, added. Missing textures, missing worlds, polluted waters, broken minimap. And what happened to Moisty Meyer? Now, to be fair to the Atlas team, not all of these bugs were in their control. The missing textures were the result of UEFN downloads breaking when performance mode is enabled, and the minimap is another UEFN bug that is still around to this day. But then stranger inconsistencies started to appear. Notice something wrong about the graphics? Yeah, they're not very OG at all. In fact, they're just the Chapter 4 graphics as the team had not created a custom time of day manager, which led to the map not really feeling like Chapter 1. There was also the inclusion of sprinting, sliding, and mantling. All of Chapter 3 movement- So personally, this was like a divide somewhat. I'm not opposed to them having the new movement options. Like, what I was looking for as a player in this was old map, old loot pool. Like, I feel like keeping the new movement options, while it's not true to how the game was back then, it's just kind of a necessity because once we're used to it, playing without it just feels terrible. There's also several settings changes or like things that have happened in the game that weren't around back then, but people still use them. Like custom keybinds for controller weren't a thing uh, back in the day. I don't think visual audio was a thing, but it's still something that many players use. Uh, confirm edit on release wasn't a thing back then, but it's like, are they going to go out and like make it to where you can't use all of these settings? I don't think they can, but my point is like, it's already not going to be how it was back then. And also the player base is very different from how it was back then. Uh, what I personally wanted was map, layout, and loot pool. 
um, keep the new movement features. The fact that the graphics changed isn't the biggest deal to me personally, although it did, uh, you know, irritate some players additions that were never present in this older version. Another issue pretty quickly arose. Due to memory limitations, the team had to cut floor loot and supply drops. With the loot pool being 100% accurate, this meant that shotguns would not spawn as shotguns did not spawn in chests in Chapter 1 Season 3, That's only true. in floor loot, meaning the game just didn't have shotguns on launch. Now the Atlas team did pretty quickly put out a patch to add the pump shotgun to the chest loot pool, and they held a community vote on whether they should disable the chapter 3 movement mechanics or not. The community voted they should. Just two days after launch, the team launched update 1.3. The up- Dude, their logo is so fire. They should. Just two- I, I love this like OG Atlas BR and the Rift, especially because if you think about how Rifts are in Fortnite, they're like, uh, you know, like basically a tear in reality. So like using a riff to go back is so good. Two days after launch, the team launched update 1.3. The update included a large number of quality of life changes, including upping the player count from 30 to 50, adding back floor loot, fixing bugs, and not removing the chapter three movement options. Yeah, another Fortnite bug emerged. With sprinting and mantling disabled, there was a weird bug where the game would try and allow them anyway, but this failed to weird, execute yeah. them properly because they were disabled, resulting you just in get some stuck truly in the strange glitches. The team also announced that they were working on bringing chapter Which one- Which I think that was just a glitch in the game at the time, where sometimes you would get stuck in that sprint animation, and then the solution for it was to sprint again, if I remember correctly, but since you couldn't sprint on this map, you couldn't fix it, and I believe that's kind of like what the problem was. Because that bug was in, uh, like- regular br as well it wasn't exclusive to this map lighting into the map in the next week which and I, I think that's one of the very tough circumstances that a lot of creative map makers are going to run into in fortnite is that like fortnite always has bugs and so like those bugs will likely spill over to your map and then you have almost no ability to fix them i would imagine guess they never got around to finishing as it's still not here today oh and you best believe that was not the end of the bugs players were reporting that the game just didn't start to be fair og fortnite was also very buggy sometimes which was reportedly a coding bug and thanks to uefn minimaps being broken oh. it was impossible to determine where the storm was and where it was going that it was probably annoying. also didn't help that the images they used to promote these updates featured locations not actually in the game whoops Another two days later, the team pushed another update to fix the movement mechanics and various other issues, and began testing full 100 player lobbies. Previously, server instability issues had prevented full lobbies from being viable. They also reported that they are indeed still working on OG graphics. Hmm. Still, this is looking promising. The team had been set back by a number of issues outside of their control, which is not fair on them, but they're working on improving the gameplay experience, so the future looks bright oh they uh they stopped posting to the account the next day just one they actually did recently tweet since this video has been made i don't know if this video had anything to do with that but they did tweet about adding paradise palms or uh westworld which was another poi nearby or an unnamed location people called westworld near there not sure if it's going to happen uh if they're going to add the entirety of the desert biome or what but they did recently tweet since this video was made which is interesting week after launch the team went radio silent, and Atlas Creative has not publicly acknowledged Atlas OG Battle Royale since. Atlas Creative might have forgotten about their OG Battle Royale, but the people haven't. But what is Bob Pants McSquirtle here talking about? You see, UEFN and Creative Toolset experiences can be monetized originally through the supporter creator system, and now through a custom island engagement payout. And so this is one of the reasons why people think these maps kind of died off. Like I said in the intro to the video, I think they would have died off anyways, just naturally. Uh, that's just, I feel like, kind of the nature of playing old versions of games like that. But Epic made it to where you can't monetize these maps. And so people get paid based on how many players are playing their maps. But if you reboot Royale or uh, the OG Fortnite map you cannot monetize that and so people hated on them for not updating it anymore because you can't monetize it who knows if that was the case uh there still is some value in them making it because it kind of grows their social media and could help future maps they make that can be monetized larger uh, like be larger because people are aware of them you know um, but 
yeah, you can't monetize these maps. And so a lot of people feel like they stopped updating it for that reason. I'm not sure if that's the case. It could also just be that it was such an undertaking and that Epic weren't budging on like memory limitations or like some of those bugs weren't able to be fixed. And so they kind of abandoned the project. But I don't really fault them for like people hate on them for not wanting to do it if they're not making money. But like if you're some of the most talented creative map makers and there is the ability for you to get paid for your work, obviously you're going to do the things that can pay you. And if you're running one of these teams, people are going to start to expect to be paid. And if you're not making money directly from a map, it's harder to justify the spending on that. It's just kind of how, how the world works. It, it is what it is. Out system. But Atlas OG Battle Royale was subject to different circumstances. You see, the day after UEFN launched, Epic Games published a blog post titled Updating Terms to Enable Publishing Versions of Battle Royale Chapter 1 Islands, in which they clarified that the Fortnite Islands Athena, Apollo, and Artemis are their legal property, and to recreate them in UEFN would be a violation. And I'm not an attorney, but I think if you have a copyright on something and you just don't ever enforce that, you run the risk of losing your copyright, so they kind of have to, uh, from my understanding. But like I said, I, I play Fortnite, I don't know much about that. ...of copyright laws. However, in acknowledgement of the community's enthusiasm towards Chapter 1's return, they made an exception to the remakes of Chapter 1's Athena Island. But, such remakes could not be eligible for monetization through the engagement payout system. Atlas would not be making any money from their work on Atlas OG Battle Royale, which was probably quite the demotivator. So that's where the story ends for Atlas OG Battle Royale. They pushed out one small update near the end of March to add the egg launcher item in for Easter, and then the updates stopped. But that's not where the story of the OG Fortnite remakes ends because there is another. Reboot Royale. Again, the trailer was so fire. Like, it might be cringe, but it, it's so nostalgic seeing all these old POIs and stuff and just the old map. Reboot Royale is another remake, this one made by the boy Dilly himself, along with a small team of other creators. On UEFN launch day, the Reboot Royale Twitter account shared the first in-game screenshots from the map, and from the images they shared, it actually looked like Chapter 1. The graphics and lighting were on point, it seemed like they would be the ones to get it right. The day after Atlas launched and all of its inconsistencies were exposed, the Reboot team shared the image of the full map and it looked exactly like Chapter 1 Season 3's map. The next day, the map finally launched, and to say people loved it would be an understatement. People dropped in and shared screenshots all over the internet, and they looked like they were ripped straight out of early 2018 Fortnite. Reboot even secured a content partnership with Lachlan's Team Power to bring more attention to the map. OG Fortnite was back, and better than ever. And then, the creative giant issue started. Um... People were falling under the map. The lighting would randomly forget to exist. Missing textures again. There were minor building mistakes. And truly, the worst render distance anyone had ever seen. Yeah, the main issue that with was one of them. launch was the lack of hate. The render distance made it very, like, kind of odd to play. HLODs. HLODs, or hierarchical level of details, is basically where an object is rendered in lower quality the further it is from the player. But this system requires some setting up in UEFN, and it can be quite tricky to get right. A few hours after the launch, the team had already pushed a patch to fix some of the issues, including removing the battle bus temporarily as it was a little bit buggy. The next day, they launched another update to fix more issues, including the same sprinting bug that affected Atlas. The day after that, they launched another update to fix the render distance and slow the speed of the storm which was not properly optimized for such a large map beforehand. However, that was also one of the weird things about the storm in these is that you couldn't see where it was going to go because the map was bugged or like showing the storm on the map was bugged or something like that. So they add they end up adding like a thing on screen that would tell you like, hey, you're 50 meters from the storm, which was helpful, but it was still just so weird to play with and kind of walk one way and be like, OK, my distance went up. I guess I got to go the other way. They just made it very weird to play. The storm effects were chapter 1 accurate rather than using the chapter 4 effects like Atlas, which just added more to the map's incredible immersion. The team was even adding new weapons to the loop pool by just 5 days in, 
adding the Heavy Shotgun. The Heavy Shotgun has played differently since it was reworked in Chapter 3 Season 1, however a few days after its addition, it was replaced by the correct Chapter 1 version, which is indeed still hiding away in the files. Five days after launch, a custom- This is what I was talking about. So you would just see 563 meters from Storm, and so you'd have to walk one way, figure out when the distance started going down, and then keep going in that direction. And like he's kind of touched on with both of these maps, they were both incredibly buggy. And I talked in the intro about how I felt like it was always going to kind of be like a trendy thing. People would come, see the old map, play on the old map a bit, and then, you know, if they've had their fill, they, they reminisced, and then they're kind of bored with it. Uh, I never expected these maps to just maintain tens of thousands of players for weeks on end. And when you have a lot of hype for something and then it comes out buggy and then like obviously the people working on it tried to make it better, but I feel like people's interest in this was kind of like a limited time thing anyway. So I, I feel like both of the maps being incredibly buggy kind of soured people on it and people just kind of naturally lost interest in it over time. And I feel like that's the same for a lot of creative maps. Only Up is huge right now, the Only Up Fortnite map. And it's very successful, but in a month or two, I don't expect that map to still be maintaining ridiculous amounts of players like it currently is. It's very much a trend, and I don't think people will look back on it and be like, oh, Only Up was terrible. What a failure. It didn't, like, maintain popularity. That's just, that's just kind of the nature of that sort of thing, I feel like. Some UI element was coded and added that shows players their distance from the safe zone and that's how I feel about this too. as a workaround to the storm's location not appearing on the map. At this point there are still issues, but the team is still working hard and pushing out constant updates. At this point, Atlas OG Battle Royale had already been abandoned. Another content update was released at the start of April to add the egg launcher for Easter followed later the same day by a patch that fixed a major visual glitch involving grass blades appearing black. Oh, hold on, bro. This chest search speed fix is another big one. It took so long to open chests on these maps because of something with creative, um, and it just it made it irritating to play. Like, you're used to searching a chest quickly. I think it took, like, three seconds or something like that to open a chest. It was wild. ...by a patch that fixed a major visual glitch involving grass blades appearing black. This update also replaced the creative chests okay, yeah, he's gonna talk about 4 it. chests, modified with first drop custom loot rather than the chapter 4 loot. This fixed a creative mode issue that has been around for a while, where creative chests take around 4 seconds to open four instead seconds? of just 1. Yeah, imagine you land somewhere, go to open a chest, and it takes 4 seconds. Like, I feel like your enjoyment of that map is already- is just gonna be out the window. Um... We have short attention spans now. We're used to one second, four seconds for chess. No, thank you. Another update was released a few days. And that wasn't how OG Fortnite was. That was just a creative thing. Days later to add random battle bus paths and allow players to drop out of the bus wherever they want, along with adding randomly generated loot llamas. But don't worry, these are the original static version, not the freaky version from Chapter 2 that runs away from you. By mid-April, the team was still working hard to release regular patches, including the addition of Chapter 1 ambient sound effects and the long-awaited addition of supply drops. On April 21st, Epic enabled XP gain on all UEF and I- That's another thing, you initially couldn't get XP for these maps. Some people care about that, you know, some people, they, they want to level up their battle pass, they only have a certain amount of time to play, so they're going to prioritize the thing that can allow them to level up, rather than not. And he said late April for XP, these maps were already like a month plus old, I feel like, at that point. Um, now the XP gain on UEFN maps is like incredible, you can play for like only up, I think I played like 20 to 30 minutes to beat it, and then got like 100k or something. Like, you get a lot of XP from UEFN maps now. But that wasn't the case back then, and like I've talked about several times, this was a very much like in the moment thing. Like the hype for this isn't gonna last forever, so like all of these issues kind of pile up. I feel like islands, which applied to both Reboot Royale and Atlas OG Battle Royale. Although Atlas had gone radio silent by this time, so only Reboot fans were made aware of this addition. Exactly one month after the launch of UEFN, Reboot Royale's final patch to date was launched, which changed the appearance of the background mountains from the pre-season 1 to that iconic huge mountain that was added in late season 3. However, this update also made the lighting less accurate, as the team had to recreate it from scratch because the official sky used beforehand was blacklisted by Epic Games in April. And then... radio silence. Again. Yeah. Reboot Royale went completely silent too, and the account has been inactive since April. So, what happened to Reboot Royale? Well, good news. 
I've done a little digging and I found some updates straight from the official Reboot Royale Discord server. On July 9th, the boy Dilly made a statement that the team has been prioritising Reboot Royale less due to Epic Games continually making their jobs harder with each new Fortnite update. He also And again, Fortnite updates are buggy. I couldn't imagine how like many moving parts there are with Creative 2.0 and making something like this, so it doesn't surprise me that these map that there's like a lot of bugs that are hard to overcome. But people see the money thing and then just kind of tunnel vision in on that. And like I've said, I, I feel like the interest for these things has kind of died down anyways, uh, because people kind of got their fill and the the experience they showed up to wasn't kind of the quality they were looking for with all the bugs and stuff. Explain the reason why Atlas had better render distance was because they used Unreal Engine's built-in HLOD builder, whereas Reboot used Fortnite's own HLOD system from 2018, which while more hardware accurate, hasn't been updated and is therefore more prone to breakage with new systems. Finally, Dilly stated that the Reboot Royale team are indeed working on something new, but they are not yet ready to announce it and they had to first deal with landscapes breaking after Fortnite's Chapter 4 Season 3 update at the start of June, which obviously set things back. He gives an estimate of three weeks, or the end of July, as to when they might be ready to announce what they're up to. So, the future looks bright for Reboot Royale, but where do the two maps sit now? Just one month after launch, and the two were already down to just hundreds of concurrent players at any time. And two months after that, Reboot Royale sits with just a handful of players at any time. There aren't even enough- So I actually, when I sat down to record this video, looked at the player counts as well so I could have it in the intro. And the Atlas map has started to like get players again. Like I think it was at 2k earlier when I looked, and then Reboot Royale was at lower than this. But like 2k is, is solid, it's not incredible, but it's certainly better than this paints it to be. I'm not sure if this video contributed to that in any way or, or kind of what happened there At reboot royale sits with just a handful of players at any time there aren't even enough players to start a match currently leaving the map in a constant downward spiral where it is destined to die exactly Meanwhile, atlas og battle royale okay, seems to have come out on top pretty consistently seeing a couple thousand players at once as it stays featured in discoveries various uefn themes and so if there's two options and one is better than the other but it has no players you're gonna play the one that has players obviously i don't remember which map i thought was better between atlas and reboot but that's just kind of the nature of things like people are gonna play the more popular one because at least that's the one you can play games tabs on a pretty consistent basis as for the future of fortnite well obviously it didn't end up being either of these two in fact i feel like that tagline is taken out of context somewhat i i, I mean and i could be wrong i, I feel like they kind of just put that as like Creative 2.0 was the future of Fortnite, but I mean, it is what it is. It ended they're up making a trailer for their project. Obviously, they're going to try to big it up, you know? Being something completely different and very strange. Only Up Fortnite, a player made adaptation of the this video is what game I was talking Only about. Up. Atlas OG Battle Royale and Reboot Royale both promised to be the future of Fortnite, but pretty quickly ended up being abandoned, largely as a result of Epic's decisions that harms the creators such as cutting off monetization on these maps and the blacklisting of the effects they needed like the sky and also fortnite updates continuously breaking creator tools whereas like the only up map i think is so much simpler to make for that person probably less bugs to encounter less moving parts and it's just something simple and trendy uh, i said it already but i would be surprised and if in a month or two that only up map is still popular it very well could be but i i played it i beat it i, I don't really have any desire to to play it again you know it's just kind of the nature of those things such that doesn't make it bad that's just how games are sometimes not every game needs to be a game that you play every day all of the time that you have to play games the hlds it all comes down to the creative jank something else to consider is that these aren't new maps without consistent new updates adding exciting new features there wasn't really much to keep people coming back and that's what i was saying earlier i i don't think that they should just be like constantly updating it maybe that would be the solution but i feel like again people would lose interest in it i feel like the ideal business model or kind of strategy for these type of things would be like kind of target a point where you think fortnite is going to be boring like towards the end of a season towards like you know three quarters of the way through a season people are always burnt out drop season four of chapter one or drop season five of chapter one and you'll have i feel like a similar effect to when these things first started people will give it a chance um 
they'll see maybe that some of the bugs have been improved and then it, it'll kind of ride its wave it'll, it'll you know be popular for a little bit and then it'll die down once people get tired of playing that sort of thing and then start working on the next season and target a point where you think the game is going to be naturally kind of dead anyways it happens pretty much halfway through or towards the tail end of every season I've been on unless there's some kind of huge event like most wanted or something like that but i feel like if one of these teams had season five or season four i feel like season three and four are kind of similar but if they had like season five ready to go um during the back half of this summer escape event i i think it would have gotten a lot of publicity just because of how um bored the fortnite community was with the game nostalgia factor especially when in comparison to battle royale chapter four these maps are pretty buggy the old map is one thing but what people really need is the resources to have fun on this map without the addition and i feel like that is probably, that's kind of a, a struggle because a lot of what made og fortnite fun is not ever coming back like part of it was all the noobs everyone was bad at the game we were all bad at the game we were all improving and learning over time but also you know chapter one season three that's like a few months after br dropped we hadn't been playing fortnite for years and so we were more kind of still uh, i don't know i don't know excited with like the little things you know whereas now a lot of people have been playing for years not that much as exciting anymore you don't see as much improvement in your own play the community isn't developing the same way and then also most of the opponents you're fighting are very good so you have to kind of be on point at all times whereas like old fortnite is just very unique for so many reasons since post chapter one season three such as shopping carts and the absence of chapter one items that have been wiped from the files entirely like people wouldn't fall for this today missile launcher the experience just isn't the and that isn't the like cypher did that so much where he would make those trap towers and then people would end up going through it and then falling for it and dying like nowadays i i feel like players wouldn't fall for that and that's just kind of the nature of the game and the nature of a game being out for as many years as fortnite has. same anymore still maybe we'll see the ultimate comeback story from reboot royale and maybe the longevity of atlas og battle royale's player count will inspire its creators to continue developing even in spite of the loss of monetization things seem pretty bleak right now but as with all things fortnite the future is bright and more importantly the future is unreal all right but this is a really good video his channel will be linked down in the description below i enjoyed this it was interesting to watch interesting to talk about like i said i think these maps would never replace retail fortnite it's just something exciting to play um and that what it doesn't matter that it dies or it's not it's not a bad thing that it's not the most popular thing ever you know it's just kind of the natural state of things um so yeah i i, I think that these maps did their job unfortunately they're buggy there's a lot of obstacles um but i don't think it was ever going to take off the way that some people thought it would i do think they can continue to make old seasons though and release them nostalgia for old fortnite is never really going to go anywhere uh people will be excited to play it again even though this initial release wasn't the best but let me know what you guys think down in the comments below if you enjoyed this give it a like subscribe if you like some more and i will see you guys in the next one thanks for watching